All right, well, welcome back. If you stuck around, this first video is going to be about all of the pots that I own, which by saying all the pots makes it seem like there's going to be a lot of them, but there's actually only five. So to do all of the cooking that I do, which is a lot, basically every other day, I only have five pots to do it in. And I used to have a lot more pots than this. When Katie and I moved in together, we both had our own set of cookware and we, I just kept all of them instead of re reducing them right away because I found a way to use all of them. But I, over time, started to realize that I had pots that I never used or I was using more pots than I actually needed just because I had them. So by reducing the pots I had, it really forced me to plan ahead on how I was going to cook and how to uh, order things or how to cook things in a way that the pot's available when something else needs it. So it's, I think it's made me more efficient at cooking, made me better at cooking. So I'll just kind of talk about, first give an overall criteria that I had for selecting the pots that I'm going to show you uh, more closely. And four of these pots, so the four on the left, excluding the big stock pot on the right, four of these can be used on the stove or they can go directly into the oven. So having the pot that could be used in the stove and then go directly into the oven and do cooking in there was important because it allows me to reduce the number of baking pans that I have to have. So for example, these two uh, skillets over here can be used for roasting vegetables or they can be used for sauteing vegetables on the stove. This Dutch oven, I can use it to make pasta or I can use it to bake bread. And then I have this small sauce pot, uh, I think it's a four quart, which can be used for very similar things. Uh, so that's like the, the major criteria that I had for selecting the pots that I would choose to be the pots that I would ideally have for life. All of these, I think, have the ability to last a lifetime, reducing my need to buy a pot every five years, every 10 years. Uh, so I'll talk about these more in detail. So on the left here, we have kind of a classic 12 inch cast iron skillet which when properly seasoned can uh, work just as well as a Teflon coated skillet. And it's a similar concept for this carbon steel skillet. So this cast iron skillet is by Caliphone and this uh, cast iron, or not cast iron, carbon steel skillet is made by a French company which I will surely butcher its pronunciation despite being from Louisiana called Matfer uh, Bourget, which it's spelled M-A-F-T-E-R-B-O-U-R-G-E-A-T. Both of these were fairly uh, inexpensive for something that's really nice quality. I think this one was under $100 and this one was for sure under $100. I just picked this up at Walmart. This I ordered from Amazon. But both of these I use almost every time I cook since I like to do a lot of roasted vegetables. <coughs> Put Put the skillet in the oven while the oven is preheating, take it out, add the vegetables in, throw it back in. I've never really gotten anything to stick to this in a bad way. So both of these I think are uh, were good purchases for me because like I said, because this can go straight into the oven, I don't have to worry about having a, a 13 by nine baking sheet to now roast my vegetables on. I just pull out one of these pots, throw it in the oven and there we go. I also use these, we do homemade pizza sometime. We had that earlier this week. Instead of having a, a, a pizza stone, which may give you some different qualities when it comes to the crust of the pizza and the texture, I just put the pizzas on one of these, throw it in the oven, and it comes out, slides right out just fine. So uh, these have been tremendously useful for me and I'm happy I made the purchases. Cast iron skillet gets a lot of use when I'm making a roux, for example. Whereas the carbon steel, depending on what I'm doing, I may be sauteing some mushrooms or sauteing some onions. And both of these, just like the cast iron, the carbon steel, you have to season it. So in many ways, the care that you show your carbon steel skillet is the same care that you would show your cast iron skillet. Where you shouldn't really use soap to clean it, just rinse it, wipe out any uh, debris. <clears throat> and keep it moving don't let water sit on it too long because of rusting and a interesting thing to note is that if you do decide to purchase something like this it will not be this color it will be shiny 
just like this pot over here. So part of the, I guess, kind of the mystique and the reason why some people buy a uh, carbon steel skillet is because of this kind of patina, this color that it takes on over time. So as you use your carbon steel skillet often and as you season it, it'll start to become this very dark color, which is an indication of use and seasoning. So this is not the signs of rust, it's just the signs of, uh, I guess, good aging. And if you look on the bottom, you can see sometimes I kind of shimmy the pile on the stove to move things around. You can see spots where some of that silver underneath color is peeking through. But yeah, both of these pots are really good uh, and they get a lot of use out of me without having to worry about the non-coat sticking peel or non-stick uh, non coating kind of coming off over the years. These are things that if they do start to lose some of their abilities to be non-stick, you just re-season them and they're good as new. Over here, I have a pot that is uh, definitely the most expensive out of all of them. And it was a wedding gift, which I am grateful for the people that pitched in and get it for me. Uh, this is a La Clusette, a Dutch oven. This is, a, I think, a 7.7 .7 quart. And it's enamel cast iron. So it's cast iron just like that skillet except it's enameled so it has a, a, a coating on the outside of it but it's also non-stick as well like i said this is a pot that i also use very often uh, when i'm making pastas when i'm making uh, beans so like red beans for example this is a pot that uh, I, I do a lot of things and it's very versatile if i want to saute things in here you can do that as well but as I said, uh, baking is something that I'm starting to get into, and particularly breaking, baking bread. So this is, uh, if you look online, you can find tons of recipes for making bread and Dutch ovens and the uh, very uh, versatile recipes. So this is another thing that uh, has allowed me to really reduce the number of pots that I have in my arsenal. This pot, uh, so because I have two skillets, I have this pot, which I can use for bigger things. And if, I, if I'm ever doing something smaller, I have this pot made by Tremitina. Uh, and a unique feature of this pot is that it's the actual cooking vessel is one piece of metal. So sometimes, as you may see on this stock pot, you have this, this portion down here where you can see that seam. And what that is, is that the body of the pot is actually a different uh, material and has different conductive properties, so different heating properties than this pad that they put on the bottom, which means that you get some different heating features as you're using this pot, whereas this pot is all the same material. And I think it's tri-clad, so there are three layers of metal uh, in this pot. So when the pot's being heated from the bottom, the heat transfers smoothly and equally up the size of the pot. So you actually, when you're using it, you can see things kind of simmer on the side of the pot because this part of the pot is also having heat transferred to it. Whereas in pots like these, the transfer of heat from the bottom to the sides is very unequal and uh, sometimes may not happen. So this pot has better cooking quality because you get more even heating. You're getting heating from the bottom, but also the sides. And as I said, this is a pot that I can do something on the stove, like let's say I want to make a sauce, but it's I don't want to stand there while it reduces for a long time. I can just throw it in the oven, let it reduce in the oven very slowly and evenly without burning like it may do on the stove. So that's something that this would be used for if I want to steam some vegetables, I'll put those in here. Uh, so this pot uh, gets also a lot of use from me. And an important feature about this pot is that, and about basically all my pots, is almost none of them you'll need soap to clean. So this pot, uh, like the others, I've never gotten anything to stick to it. Usually I just rinse it out. And the only time I have to use soap on this one is if I do something that has oil in it. So like if I do an olive oil, uh, something with olive oil in this or in the Le Creuset, then I'm forced to use soap to really get that residue out. And finally, this big 12 quart stock pot I got because being from Louisiana, being from New Orleans, gumbo is a part of life. So you can't, I mean, you can make a gumbo in this size pot, but it never seems like it's enough. So I got this pot for those type of occasions. Uh, 
that was the main reasoning for wanting to get one extra pot that was also really big. But another reason for getting a pot of this size is I use it for boiling. So because I almost never use this pot for anything else but boiling and gumbo, which is something that I make maybe only a handful of times a year, I never have to worry about, okay, what am I going to do with this pot next? It's This is going in the stove and putting water in it and I'm going to get some water boiling while I'm able to use these four pots. Uh, so this one is like highly specific use. So this one gets used maybe once or twice a month, depending on how often we do pasta. Whereas these pots I'm using at least once a week. So yeah, those are the the five pots that I own. Uh, these are the five pots that I hope to have for the rest of my life. The stock pot, maybe I'll get something better in the future. And this pot right here, the Trimatina, now that I've actually have, have it in person, this is one that I also might replace. And it's for something that you may not ever realize until you actually have it and they're in a very specific situation. And that uh, comes down to the handle itself and the shape of it. So if you look at this handle, it's very rounded, which like feels nice in the hand. However, if your hand is wet, and I'll just do a quick demonstration. If your hand is wet and you're trying to pour, because the handle is rounded, it'll start to roll in your hand. As you can see, even though my hand isn't very wet, I'm not gripping it tight to give the same uh, same idea. It'll start to roll in your hand. So All Clad, which is a another brand uh, like Tremitina, where you get a pot that the actual cooking part is one solid piece of material. All Clad makes a pot in the same class that has a little divot here. So it makes it as you grip it, your flesh kind of has something to sink into. It makes it harder for it to rotate in your hand as you're pouring. Uh, so this is maybe one pot that I might replace at some point, uh, but maybe only if this one gets damaged or if, if this starts to get frustrating for me, which it hasn't so far. But yeah, all of these pots in, in total, uh, this one was the most expensive, about 300 something dollars. This one, I think it's 80. This one was probably about 40. So that's under 500. This one was also kind of pricey. I think this one was maybe about 70, but in total, all of these pots cost maybe about $600, which I know it seems like a lot. Uh, but as I said, these are pots that ideally I won't have to replace for the rest of my life, despite how often and frequent I'm using them for cooking. Uh, I take pretty good care of my cooking, uh, uh, the things I used to cook with, particularly in my pots. So. Yeah, if you have questions about like what pots you should get or I don't know, just this was a, something that I know I know a lot about. It's easy for me to talk about cooking and pots and stuff. So uh, I would encourage all of you to move away from non from like Teflon and coated pots uh, and move into more like carbon steel uh carbon steel cast iron maybe enamel coated as well uh, because they're I think they're just better overall they have more durability you can use them for longer without the coating rubbing off which is something I notice sometimes in people's pots that they have uh, so yeah that's the uh, that's it if you yeah, like I said if you are interested in knowing more you can look online or ask me I'm always looking for people to talk to about something in these days so yeah, that's it. Uh, stick around for the next video. Uh, we just got our Vitamix in the mail today, so it's pretty exciting for Katie and I. So maybe I'll probably will do a video on our appliances that we have. We don't have very many of them, uh, but just a easy topic to do another video on. So that's all. Peace.